Hello there, and welcome to episode 11 of my tutorial series for RimWorld Biotech. In this one, we're going to cover ideology issues, because it's now about time to develop our little place here a little bit more than just survival, you know? We have a nice fortress, we have electricity, we have livestock that happily dwell over here on the meadow, and all in all, life's pretty good. We should now go forward and get ourselves somewhere. So, ideologians are quite deep topic and you can't do a lot of nice things here. What we're playing here is a very, very generic ideologian at this point. I left it generic so we can explore the system a little bit better without uh, whacking our, our skull against something uh, really crazy. So, <clears throat> in a nutshell, Everybody who's part of the ideologian has these rules applied to him or herself. Right now we don't really have any particular rules, we just don't like innocent executions, we don't like slavery, and so on and so forth. It's pretty... this is pretty standard. What's more interesting is when we scroll down here is we have our roles. There's uh, here, for example, our chief is actually desiring a broad wrap uh, hats gear to be completely happy, and our moral guide actually wants a veil and a uh, burqa, so we should work on that. Here we have our rituals, and actually I noticed that I derped out in the last episode on the uh, timed ritual. So there's rituals you can do every time, whenever you want to, and there's rituals that have a fixed date. So this one was due on the 10th of April, May, the 13th, but uh, we can still do it. So let's start on out with that while exploring this further. So as you see there, we have here at the ritual spot also the option to do this uh, fiesta family thing right again, but uh, you should always wait for the cooldown to pass because you see there is a uh, a heavy penalty on your success rate when you do the same ritual over and over again. You basically will only piss off your people. So we're going to do the patriotic uh, jubilee and that's a Sky Lantern Festival. This is only doable if you have enough uh, timber available in your colony, but luckily that's for our people, not the least of the problem. So every one of these rituals here has a chance to give you your, your people development points. So that's when you're playing with a fluid ideologian, which we do. You can also play your ideologian in a way that doesn't ever develop itself. That would be also an option, but I'm personally a big fan of the uh, of the fluid development and that's why I'm featuring it here because it allows you to whenever these development points are full you can adopt a new meme change your rules and uh, let the, the story influence the people so to say that's uh, something I really do like so we're going to go now through this ritual and hopefully it's going to be great so you see there there's the lanterns And uh, it was a unforgettable patriotic jubilee. So due to this, we have gained now 10 points of mood for everybody. That's amazing. And we also gained plus four development points. So the better the quality the, of the event, the more development points you get. So there's a new Ambrosia Sprout. This is very far off of the grid. I'm not going to mark that. I don't want my people to wander over there to harvest something. As cool as Ambrosia might be, at some point the stuff might, must grow here too. I'm going to explain that. Basically it's a very soft drug that has a very high trade value. So this one I'll ignore. You don't need to pick up every Ambrosia sprout. If you don't do anything with them, they don't cost you anything. So, but we weren't done there yet. So <clears throat> first off, let's put these uh, pieces of clothing we need on our bills so we need that we need that and we need that obviously so Whew, where is it so there is it so life without uh without bill mods is pretty hard for me basically the whole user interface that i see here is not really familiar to me <laughs> there's so many things but vanilla is okay it's playable and it's enjoyable too so here we have, I have now pulled these um, orders on top of the of the list, so to make sure that Gray is uh, putting these things on. So, well, 
there's two ways you can do this. The easy way is to get on over to your person that wants that item here. The ethical chief wants the broad wrap now. Yes. And you just uh, right click the person and uh, force wear that broad wrap. And uh, check it out now. So here we have he wants that piece of clothing minus four mood versus I have that piece of clothing no more minus mood. You don't get a bonus for that, but uh, why should they give a, get a bonus if they just have their bare minimum satisfied? So you can afterwards clear the forced clothing and pray that the AI does not decide to change the clothing at some point. The other thing you can do is uh, to select your person here, get into the assignment mode, and uh, here you have a outfit management thing. So gray is set up on anything. As you see here, there's several presets, and we're going to make a new preset, and that's going to be, we're going to call that priest. And uh, now it's a little bit annoying, I know, but uh, basically what you gotta do is you pick up a, uh, you make a new preset, and now I allow only a veil as a headgear, because you can only wear one headgear in this game. And on the armor slot, well, no, not armor slot. Er. So. Ah, here is all miscellaneous. I'm a bit confused by that. What I've been, I haven't been here for a while. So, and here I, I only allow this. And now basically I have forced gray to apply these uh, or wear these pieces of clothing whenever he can. That's um, this way you can be sure that it works on out as intended. And here we are going to do this again. New outfit. I'm going to call that leader. And uh, Roly gets uh, that. And here I really only delete the headgear basically and replace it with broad wrap and now he gets that and these setups are easy efficient and do their thing roly is now still eligible to just wear whatever uh she wants and there's no problem with that and the same goes for gray but uh, as you see there there's this one slight issue there um gray now is no longer willing to wear everything else here either it's a little bit uh, problematic, so I don't know which uh, which layers the the Borka will cover. So where we're going to allow the entire miscellaneous tab for now, I find this one of the most um, tricky things to manage in RimWorld, and I personally think it's a lot easier to manage that by just uh, by just force wearing the piece of gear that you. Uh, you want to give them because now gray is running around naked that's what my configurations did because there was not enough uh, material for the burka so we have we have we have some cows joining or or k or, or course now that's amazing <clears throat> wonderful so let's send oh yeah the our dude is already getting all of there and uh, pulling them to the pen. So now we have the entirety of the livestock together. So, well, we're going to wait until we got the necessary gear for our people, and then we're going to fit outfit Gray as he wants to be as well. But that's not all. We're not done here. There's more ideology in store. So we have here our festivals. We have already uh, made, no, we have already, uh, participated in a few of these but there's also buildings so we have here a ritual seat that's a item that improves the quality of rituals and we have here an ideogram that's basically an altar it's a, bit of a different word for an altar so we're now going to set on up a room which will which will work as a temple for our people because it's always nice to have a room where you do your rituals at i think in this space one of the coolest ways to do that is to cave it into the mountain because we have a lot of mountain space available here and this way i don't need to build a new building and i can save the room 
for something else. We have an excellent miner on our colony, so that shouldn't be any problem. So once this room is caved out, we're going to outfit that room. So there's going to be a door. And all in all, our colony is now extremely thriving. This is basically how it should be. We have our defenses online, we have a steady development, and uh, we're researching things. And life's good, all in all. Yeah. So here's uh problem about our current tabs here is that the veil and the burqa can only be made out of wool. It's still a while ahead until our sheep have given us enough wool to do that. And this is why livestock, by the way, is pretty great. There's a lot of animals that yield different life, uh, different products, and. Uh, Go check them out. Animals in RimWorld are a wild and crazy thing. It's a, a lot of fun included. Alright, there we go. Nice side effect here is that we're also gaining a lot of material to work with. So, it's time to expand our power grid. And I'm going to let that run here. And here we're going to select the smooth surface command for the first time. This way you can command your constructors to make the wall nice looking. Basically that's what it does. One really nice side effect of a nice looking uh, polished wall is that, I hope this does work, yeah, you can put an electrical conduit into the wall and if the wall ain't smoothened, if it's looking like this, your people will chunk it down instead of uh, just putting a, a electro electrical conduit into the wall. This is a trick how you can transform, how you can put wires through mountain ranges, basically. All you need is a uh, piece of smoothened wall here. That's what you require for that. Smooth granite, by the way, is one of the hardest things that you can see there. So granite wall 510 and smooth granite is 900. So natural mountain ranges are much more powerful than uh, everything you could construct yourself. You might ask yourself, Icon, why are you doing this to yourself? The reason is quite simple. I want an electrical lamp in here. So we're going to let that. Simple reason is whenever your people are working in darkness, if they aren't uh, specifically uh, gifted with dark side or anything, they work much, much slower. Also, their mood is suffering. So wherever you have people working on a longer period of time, put up some light. It's going to be great. It doesn't cost you much and decreases you the efficiency of your folks by a ton. Okay, and also we're gaining a lot of nice blocks here. So. We're going to fast forward here a little bit on high speed and everything is working as intended. We, we can hear, we should always uh, keep an eye out, keep a keen eye out for those predators. Whenever they show up, we should kill them off. And in the meanwhile, oh, muffalos, let's, uh, let's tame ourselves some muffalos. The thing is, uh, muffalos are really, really awesome fellas. They are much like cows, but uh, much woolier. <laughs> so I'm pulling off, uh, pulling up an entire menagerie here by now, but that's okay. I don't mind. So poor little Victor. So here we get a nice little quest for our. Okay, so this is really good. We just need to keep a animal safe for 10 days and we get some, some honor bonus for that. Let's do that. So these quests have to be accepted with a certain person because you have to decide right away which, uh, which of your colonists is supposed to be the recipient for those uh, honor points. And since I have a warehouse which is constantly heated staffed out with animal beds that thing here is not is no problem at all it's suffering from paralytic abasia that means somebody has to feed the animal regularly and it has to have a bed and a safe spot but that's all we need to do keep it fed and keep it safe and uh, earn honor for a bad simple concept 
Okay, but I ran out of timber. I saw that one of my campfires was uh, off, and uh, I knew that there was something off. Well, you can also research the technology of tree planting, and the fun part about tribal backgrounds is you have that right from the get-go. So what we can do here is we can plant out a little zone. Let's do this, actually. Something like this. A little bit larger because trees need a lot of room and then we're going to plant out some birch trees here so the thing with trees is as you see there it requires a darned long time so planting out trees is a very very demanding job for your folks and i personally recommend tree sowing only when your colony is already quite established in this situation here all in all i mean we could easily just chop chop trees whenever we require it outside there but it's pretty cool to have your own little uh, growing zone for trees that will be automatically harvested as well and automatically refilled this way you don't need to keep track of your wood stockpiles the entirety of the time and i personally find that quite comfy but seriously keep in mind that you're putting quite a you know, huge strain on your on your field hands and when you see that this job is delaying all the other jobs by all means you can always turn off the uh, check mark here and uh, your people will mind other business first this is more like a long-term thing but it pays off quite uh, tremendously because when when we're done with that our dudes won't have to have I won't have to keep that much of an eye out for the wood stockpiles anymore. Quite the opposite will be the case. I think I will need to have to, I will have to empty my stockpiles every now and then. Okay, so the room's now finished. We're going to issue a couple of nice orders here. So uh, we're going to smooth the surface here all together entirely. There's one thing about mountains. Let's put on put on the beauty display so these these mountain walls they're inherently ugly you see there's minus two but if they are smoothened they are inherently beautiful so that's a pretty cool way of investing no resource at all just work time and make the room more beautiful so next step we're going to put in our ideogram here so has to be rotated in a direction that your people can stand in front of it, of course. And after that, we're going to put up some kneel sheets. So these things can be made out of leather. Our leather stockpiles are not pleasing me. And tomorrow we're going to kill off the predators one more time and uh, make sure that we're going to have some safety there. So, little cob is cooking. I disagree with that. So, cooking is a very sensible topic in this game, and I'm personally a big fan of letting only those people cook who are actually really good at it. Because of food poisonings, they're really horrible. So, we have a psychic drone event. That means everybody of male gender is suffering from a slight mood penalty this is if your colony is stable never really a big thing unless it hits with medium or even high severity uh, low psychic low drones of high severity are massive and usually usually resulting in mental breakdowns even in, in uh, pretty stable uh, colonies and uh what can I say? The grizzly bear thinks that he's going to take the initiative on us. Well, works on out fine for me as well. So you grizzly, let's uh, let's have fun with ya. So first thing first, I'm retreating. There's uh, this is not really a good situation to be in. Our shooters are all not together, and now now the crew is together. The grizzly bear has immediately swapped away from uh, Roly, but uh, now we're uh, we're we're actually we actually want that fight. And the fun thing is, when they're just uh, hunting somebody for for food, they are usually retreating once they get their first shot in the face. This is pretty annoying. 
because the, the threat ain't over here. No, no. The bear still has quite some appetite for one of our dudes, but, uh... Now, that's what I've been waiting for. Grizzly Bear went into revenge, and now he's pissed, and now he's hunting Roly, and now we can much easier kite that out. And as you see there, I keep saying it, I keep repeating it, I only do it because it's true. Those predators are nothing to, uh, to take lightly, you know? That dude would have killed Roly if I wouldn't have had a uh, quick response to that. So... That means we're going to go or write the next hunt directly after that, because it's it's something that I personally think is uh, only really micromanageable, because um, it's very easy for your, uh, for your people to screw themselves over by, by being alone against a grizzly bear that just goes hostile because you shot at him. And uh, basically, it's very, very unlikely that you are going to down the grizzly before he reaches you. And the moment your, uh, your, your people are, are close up with the grizzly, they can't shoot anymore. When you're in melee, you can't shoot. So, sadly, our people can't shoot right now either, so. This is why it sometimes is really annoying to uh, take down uh, predators. This one even uh, left the map. Well, you know what? Since it's uh, since we're already on it, let's uh, finish that job entirely for today. This is a a day a, a day's work basically. You know, we're uh, we're spending uh, fifty percent of an entire work day on that. So this wolf uh, this wolf wants blood. Alrighty. So, oh, I messed up my kiting. That tree blocked me here. So, and you see there, we have right away wounds, and uh, this one even left a scar. So that's, uh, RimWorld is really quite unforgiving when it comes down to such things. That's a pretty good example of why I keep saying the best combat is the one where your people don't even get wounded at all. I mean, Grey ain't armored, you know? There's, uh, tribal wear and a jacket is no armor. But at the same time, you know, yeah. This is enough of a wound to kill off Grey, you know? If we don't treat that, that is. But luckily we have our doctors and, uh... I'm going to call off Wunas to uh, to do that treatment right away because reasons. All right, we have researched machining. The next thing on the list is gunsmithing, and once we have that unlocked, we are in to the wonderful world of building guns all by ourselves. We're going to put up the machining table already. We cannot do too much with it as it is right now, but uh, it's going to be okay. So there we go, the ideogram is being built. We ran out of timber here. So here, this is uh, this is my own fault. I'm, I'm issuing too many jobs at once. I know, I know. Sorry, guys. So what I'm doing here is I'm just harvesting some of them manually. So we have a uh, small stockpile of timber again to, to light up the fires and all. So, there we go. And little cop ear is already on growth tier two. That's uh, because his learning need is very satisfied here. It's ninety four percent satisfied, and uh, due to that, he gains more growth points, so to say. Oh, Goronlin's uh, pod. Well, well, this is actually something we should do. So Goronlin pods allow you to go symbiotic with the trees even more. I'm going to explain the entire system in a, in a, uh, in a dedicated episode for that. The Ancient Far Bond. So, here we could accept a quest for one of our ideologians relics. So, this is a bigger thing. This triggers an entire crusade, so to say. 
and uh, well right now it's nothing we should start at this point so a lectern is going to be connected to the uh, to the altar here it's basically the spa spot for the speaker and uh, let's clean up the room here there we go and uh, here our sanctuary is all full so it's for, for rooms where you want to full, where you want to pull off rituals it's really really important that they are visually pleasing the wall smoothing is one thing and the other thing we could do now there's two things we can do we can just uh, clap in the regular flooring we got this is on a plus one it's net positive or we're going to go for another surface smoothing but this time on the floor because if it's uh, if it's rocky soil like uh, here rough granite it's in the lower it's in the lower left uh, corner of the, of, the, of, the, of the screen rough granite and uh, here we have rough slate all these rough uh, stone types can be smoothened and uh, if you check them out they are even more beautiful than a flooring we built so we not only do we save uh, resources we also make something that's more beautiful than our um, original uh, thing there so machining table and gunsmithing tech is down the first thing that i'm doing here is i'm going to create myself one bold action rifle and uh well let's make at least one revolver and uh well i'm not a big fan of the pump shotgun because the chain shotgun is so much better but let's make one one rifle and one revolver these are really really cool and here we have a, a refugee quest so five refugees are approaching we would have to host these five people for 17 days and uh well our colony ain't fit for hosting five extra people so we're just going to pass on uh, pass on that there's uh I, I don't think there's any shame in that you don't need to have any straggler but um you can use these quests of course to uh to get yourself some severe bonus in workforce it's pretty cool not gonna lie so i'm going to set grace schedule on smithing top priority because smithing is where you where you do the gunning and uh, we can now deconstruct the campfire because we don't need that anymore for the temperature these days we're using heaters so quick check on the wildlife there's a new grizzly bear in town yeah that's boreal forest in a nutshell man but uh well for for now i'll leave him be only reason is that i'm uh, that i'm right now counting on gray to craft me some guns and uh as much as i think that the recurve bow is a great and uh, awesome medieval weapon guns are just better there's uh, no point denying that guns are just better so here we got a unfinished bolt action rifle on the on the table and that's how the game handles all these things it's uh, always the same procedure we have work units left on that and we have an author on that that means only gray is able to finish this uh, piece of work here so and the rifle has been finished and uh where is that Where did he put the rifle? <laughs> ah, here. So it went off in good quality. Perfect. So we're going to give that rifle on over to Vunas. So we have now a real shooter. And Roly won't receive a ranged weapon because Roly would be very unhappy if she'd have to. As a brawler, you get inherent bonuses to melee, but you're inherently bad at shooting, and you also get pissed off if you have to shoot. So we're not going to do that to her. Opossum, though, he is very, very proficient in melee. As a Neanderthal genoframe, uh, he's he's extremely well fit for bad, but nevertheless, he even even if he's uh, 
ill fit for a bad. For now, I'll give him a recurve bow because I really want to have more shooters at the very moment. One person for melee is enough for the colony for now. We're going to change that in the future, of course, but for now, I really, I really feel like that's an okay thing. And Cobb turned into an adult. So, uh, due to the fact that he had some uh, learning uh, th some learning process uh, behind him, we can now choose between these traits here. All in all, Cobb is a horrible, uh, went off as a horrible um, baseline character, because usually you have way more time to treat these people, but we get at least to choose the nimble trait, and nimble is amazing. This is really, really good. Way better than the other two. So, uh, here we go. And uh, usually you go through three of these faces with the children, and uh, that's uh, where they go way um, what will you receive way better stats, but it is as it is. It ain't really that much of a uh, horrible outcome or anything. We can't work with that. So, my dear friends, that's the end of today's episode. We have set up our better ideology spot. I have gone through the basics of ideology, and right now our ideology doesn't do that much for us, but uh, I wanted to keep it that clean and easy to begin with, and next episode, we're going to go through these concepts even more. And if that ever happens, just uh, draft and undraft your colonies so they all jump on their feet to quench that fire. Dry thunderstorms are really, really bad news. Alrighty, so next time, we're going to go deeper into that. Hopefully get those development points. And I'm going to explain and explore a couple of other things. And uh, we're getting closer to the point where we're actually able to raid other places. So lots of goodies up ahead of us. So leave me a comment down below and feel free to ask away if there's any topic you want to see covered next. I do plan to branch out into royalty as the next bigger thing. And uh, yeah, leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Leave a subscription if you enjoyed that type of content and you haven't done so already. There's practically every day coming up something like that from my side. I'd be happy to have you. See you soon and enjoy.